So, sound symbolism, what is this? At the foundation of linguistics, it was sort of decided that signs and signifiers don't really need to have a motivated relationship. That is, there's no reason why tree means tree. The sounds of tree don't indicate to you that it's a tree other than by convention, the fact that in English that means tree. If you're a speaker of German, Baum, Dutch, Baum, uh, Spanish, Arabol, French, Arbre, you name it, right? No particular motivated reason. There can be descent patterns, you know, uh, languages can be related, so French and Spanish, the root is similar, Dutch and German, the root is similar, okay, English is related to uh, German and Dutch, but the word's not the same, okay, conventions change, but it's all sort of conventions, it's not motivated intrinsically or deep from within, right? However, there's the recognition that some words actually may be iconic, and a, a growing number of researchers see this as a fact of world languages, and we now assume that there may be, in any given language, a whole subset of words that are iconic. So what does iconic mean? That means that there's some motivated relationship that isn't just systematic. Uh, for instance, if I say in uh, Japanese, doki doki, um, this means I'm sort of nervous but excited, you know, so there's some positive looking forward to, but also some negative, uh -huh, but it's kind of exciting. That that is said to be the case because doki doki uh, imitates the heartbeat. And your heart is beating in a particular way when you say that. This is an example of a mimetic or an idiophone. Depends what you call them. In, in Japanese tradition, it's often mimetics. Many other parts of the world, idiophone. Which are a class of marked words that depict sensory imagery. And the pict there is that it's sort of a painting word. So doki doki is painting a picture somehow of the situation via reference to the copying of the heartbeat and then comes to be conventionalized to mean a, a sort of nervous excitement. So these are an alleged class of non-arbitrary words, of iconic words, and they exist in many world languages. These have been identified through extensive field work, both sort of introspective work, you could say, in Japan, of, oh, we have these in Japanese, what's going on here? But also uh, field work conducted in many languages of Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa in particular, um, Southeast Asia, um, and also South America, actually, uh, as well. And there have been noted different traditions of describing them, but it boils down to a similar class of words that we can identify as being metics or idiophones. But a new trend would emerge.